After today's monster rally in the Bitcoin and crypto market, the question I got asked is, did I miss the entire bull market? Well, no, you didn't. And actually, things are just getting heated up. And I'm going to show you exactly why that is. But before we jump into that, uh, just as a little PSA, if you saw a video with Michael Saylor or Brian Armstrong or anybody in the crypto community that said, hey, send me some crypto, I'll send you a double back. Uh, that is an AI, artificial intelligence generated scam. Now, I did a video. You can find that video. There's a link in the description. It looks just like this. And from there, watch that video. It's about five minutes. It'll show you what to do and why it is complete garbage. All right, so let's just jump into it. So the question is, did I miss it? Because, I mean, we've had a tremendous rally. I mean, you know, our market cap is like $1.8 trillion. We're, we're uh, on the precipice of uh, hitting $2 trillion and uh, Bitcoin's going up. Ethereum's going up, Solana's going up, everything's going up. So did you miss it? No, and this is why. If we take a look at coinmarketcap.com forward slash historical, there's a link in the description. You can check this out yourself. You can see that before a halving, things are a little bit off as far as like what it's been and what it is right now. Take a look at this. This is the 3rd of January, January 2016 and the prices that were there. And keep in mind the projects that are continue to be in the top 15. So you'll see this, Bitcoin. XRP, Litecoin, Ethereum, sound familiar? They should, they're still there. Dash, eh, a little bit wonky. Dogecoin, one of my favorites. Peercoin, BitShares, no. Stellar, yeah, okay. Next, Maiden Safe Coin, Namecoin, Factum, Bitcoin, Monero, Sure, Ruby, Rubycoin, Clams, that doesn't make any sense. But look at the prices. This is in 2016, $430 for Bitcoin. XRP, fraction of a penny. Litecoin, three bucks. Ethereum, under a dollar, <laughs> under a dollar. So, of course, when we're when we're taking a look at this historical data, the reason why is because everything goes in four-year cycles. I, I know people don't believe in it, but uh, it's held up for 13 years, so I don't know what the problem is. But you can see that everything starts with a, a halving. And, of course, the first halving is in 2012. You can't see it. All-time high dip reset. The last one we just take a look at was 2016, a halving. Then we had an all-time high dip reset. In 2020, halving. All-time high dip reset. And then, of course, 2024, we're going to see another halving. So what did that look like in 2020? Well, here it is in all its glory. 5th of January, 2020. Right now, I believe it's uh, 2nd of January, 2024. Congratulations to you made it the new year. But look at these prices. Bitcoin, $7,400. All right. And Ethereum was $136. And I remember I, I was around this time. Of course, I got started in 2017. And I remember thinking to myself, I seriously thought to myself, wow, 136 bucks. I think at one point it was like $90. And I thought to myself, man, that's kind of expensive. I'm just going to, maybe I should wait a little bit until it goes down. But I thought to myself, nah, stupid. You're not that smart. Just keep dollar cost averaging. It worked out. XRP, 19 cents. Tether. Bitcoin Cash, man, all right. $224. Litecoin, 43. EOS, $2.70. Binance Coin, 14 bucks. <laughs> Unbelievable. Bitcoin SV and so on and so forth. So the question that you get is, did I miss it? And looking back in 2020, no, you didn't. And of course, in 2021, when we had that monster rally, I mean, things changed. Things looked a heck of a lot different. Take a look at this. Here's 2021. And again, pay attention to the ones that are in the top 15 or so. Bitcoin, Ethereum, still there. Binance Coin, still there. XRP, Tether, Cardano. And look at these prices. This is on 11th of April, 2021. 60000 for Bitcoin. Ethereum, $2,100 from 134 Binance Coin, 525 and look at this one, Cardano, $1.26, and it actually uh, hit new highs, hit $3. Polkadot, was, didn't even exist, did, it existed, but it wasn't in the top 10. $41, Litecoin, again. Uniswap was in the top 10, almost 30 bucks. Chainlink, the Oracle, $33. Stellar still there, Bitcoin Cash, but falling fast. Theta, 12, Filecoin, 179, and so on and so forth. So yes, there were a lot of tokens from here, and cryptos and Bitcoin, of course, has always been number one. But what if you just said to yourself, you know what? I don't know how to pick these new ones. Well, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter because what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to show you that even if today, 2nd of January, 2024, even if you pick the top 13, 14 or so of, of cryptos, some of these won't be here in the top 15 towards the end of the bull run. I don't know when that is. So let's just take, let's just go back to 2020. And we're going to take the top 13 or so, 13, 14 or so. And we're going to stick them into Ben's site over at Into the Cryptoverse. Links in the description, first month, 10% off. But what I want you to just to, to imagine is this. Nobody knows what's going to be in the top 15. Nobody knows what's going to be the fastest horse. I mean, Solana has uh, been, been a heck of a ride. But who knows how long it's going to last? I mean, I own a boatload of it and I hope it does well, but I'm not married to it. So even if you don't, pick the absolute top one. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to show you why. 
So let's just say you started to invest on January 2nd, 2020. You put 10 bucks in a day. You put it into Bitcoin, Ethereum, BNB, XRP, ADA, Tron, Litecoin, Bitcoin Cash, Stellar, BSV, EOS, and Monero. And if you would have just spent $10 a day, if you would have invested $5,000, again, 10 bucks a day, with Cardano, you would have had $124,000. Here's the profit and loss, 2,387%. BNB, you'd have $111,000. Ethereum, $55,000. Stellar, $36,000. XRP, $27,000. Tron, I mean, you get the drift, right? And actually, Bitcoin, you know, you would have put in $5,000. You would have essentially 4 x and had almost $20,000, which is not bad. It's a, it's a pretty safe bet moving forward. But again, when people say, Rob, did I miss it? Did I miss it? You didn't miss anything. And I don't care, honestly, that what it comes down to is this. You can invest in whatever you want to. And everybody's going to say they're a genius. And, they're gonna, and they thought, I picked this and I picked that. That's fine. In my personal opinion, most of everything is going to look like a genius call because everything's going to go up. The real test is how long can you write it up without taking massive amount of profits, even though you should take some profits along the way, and how many of you can actually sell? Because buying is easy, but selling is tough. Anyhow, let me know what you think about that in the comments section. And it really does come down to this, which is a spot ETF. And here's the funny things that are going on. This is uh, Eric Wachunas, senior ETF analyst for Bloomberg. This is the guy that's been calling for the uh, spot Bitcoin ETF for the whole time. I'm uh, personally leery that it's going to be passed. I'm one of the very few. But uh, hey, if it, if it happens, great. I'd rather be wrong and rich than right and poor. And uh, again, it doesn't really matter because I still dollar cost average really doesn't. So he says this, and this just happened today. New grayscale amendment just dropped. Clear language on cash only, but still no authorized participants or AP named. Just blanks where names should go. Not sure why since the SEC wants to see it and they have been pretty cocksure about having one. Also, Nothing on the fees that I could see. That's a big open question too. So as far as these authorized participants, who's it going to be? Who can actually redeem this? Is it going to be JP Morgan, like they said they were going to do? Going to be other places? Well, nobody really, nothing's in concrete yet because it hasn't been filed. But uh, here at Michael Sunshine, he is the CEO of Grayscale, says, hey, we've been here for a long time. We've had authorized participants lined up since 2017. And visit our website for details. A little, a little low-key flex, I would say. So people would say, well, is this uh, something to be concerned about? Eh, maybe, maybe not. This is Scott Johnson, finance lawyer over at Barclays, and he states this. Yeah, this amendment was just to file certain material agreements. I don't know what the SEC is saying behind closed doors, but in my opinion, not listing the authorized participants isn't a basis to deny 19B-4. Putting aside the facts, Grayscale Bitcoins is in a weird set of limbo. Interesting. APs will obviously need to be included at some point for the registration statement to be completed and go effective. So we'll see how it all works out. But again, this is supposed to be all wrapped up by January 10th. Now, the final deadline is in March, but I would say it's very odd if they deny this on January 10th because that is the last day for ARC. And if ARC Investments and Kathy Woods, they deny all of them, then they're out of it. And the next group that comes in is Grayscale and everybody else. So if they get 86 out of it, it'd be an interesting situation. Anyhow, let me just think about that in the comment section. And finally, just to wrap this up, if you're looking for the next big thing, I've been talking about this for a while, interact.io. This is a website where all these different airdrops and things, and it, what it really does is just kind of get you into the know about the different uh, different products that are coming out. And uh, it just rolls you through. Every day I do about five minutes and I just kind of do essentially airdrop farming. And uh, now I'm on this base one. I'm gonna link this in the description. And you have to, it's very basic stuff. You just follow things on Twitter. You use the actual platform. And they'll even tell you like the difficulty here is a beginner. The gas required is between five and 10 bucks. It only takes five minutes and you go from there. I did this one. I'm going to do this one to actually tomorrow. And the one I did yesterday was Linnea. So just something for you to do because the more that you do, the more points that you get. And of course, if there's an airdrop, it can be massive, but uh, nobody knows. So, but it only takes a little bit of time and a little bit of gas to do it. And then finally, if uh, you are involved in any type of NFT community, I don't care if it's as high as Board Ape Yacht Club or Crypto Toads. I know most of these captains, Wolf Game. Just take your pick. I don't care who it is. But if you're involved in any NFT community, 
I will be involved with uh, starting up a project of our own. And it is a web two game that was uh, enormously huge in 2014, 50 million downloads. And right now it gets a million different Google search engines per month organically. What I wanna do is work with a lot of these different NFT communities to do NFT and token airdrops. So if you are a part of those communities, I would like to talk to them and you. There is a link in the description for my X account. That's the best way to reach out. I'll also be doing a tweet or a post, I guess now. And uh, that is it for today. So look, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing. Everything we talk about is time sensitive. Things are gonna move pretty fast. So uh, subscribe to somebody, get your news from somewhere because uh, this next year is gonna be a little bit crazy. Anyhow, that's it. Thanks so much. See you on the next one.